Okay, this video will be my tip of the day video, so it's going to be very short. So today we're going to look at prototyping tools. Now when you build a circuit, first of all you build it on a, on a solderless breadboard like this and get it up and running. This is a fairly complex analog circuit. Or here's a digital circuit, it's fairly simple, we've got a black pill and we've got an accelerometer. Now once we get the circuit up and running, we want to put it onto a more permanent board, like a Vero board. Like a prototype board like this here. So this is a Vero board, it's strip board, where you can make your isolation channels and then you can solder in your components. Here's another example. It's a smaller board, a little interface board, same sort of idea. Now you could also get proto boards. So here's an example of a proto board. This is for the SCAMP 3. So you can mount your components on here and you solder the back. And there's other proto boards. This one's a fairly complex one. It's a fairly complex uh, project. This is a PAL programmer, programmable logic. There's your sockets to put the PAL chips in. Or you could get prototyping boards that mimic the solderless breadboards like this here. So they mimic your common solderless breadboard. So you can build a circuit on that. Now the next step is to uh, put the components in and solder them, solder them in on the back. So you have to have some way to hold it. Now there's a few ways. I've used a vise like this. Here's a vise. This fits into a stand. So you can mount your board this way, or you can mount it this way. This is for fairly big projects. But for simple projects, I have another type of tool. Okay, this is what I use to hold my proto board for small projects. So I have a base plate. This is steel. And I have some standoffs, and they're magnetic. And they're pointed. So I'll put them on the board. And this is my proto board and it has mounting holes, there's four mounting holes and they go over the points so there's one, there's two, three and four put them in and now it's solid so now I can do work, I put my, my components in now if I want to solder the back since it's symmetrical I pop it up and I put it down, now I could solder and it's, and it's very strong now what happens if we don't have holes in our proto board? So we'll look into that next. Okay, if the proto board does not have mounting holes to fit over the standoffs, there's a little 90 degree ledge on the standoffs, which you can see, and you could fit the board right in into there like that. So I'll demonstrate. So we'll put two of them down, and we'll put the board on in the groove. We'll get two more. Fit it on. So there you go. Now if you want to turn it over to do some soldering, you could slide it out, you could turn it, put it back in. Now we could do soldering. Okay, here's another example. I got some Vero board and there's no mounting holes, so I mounted them on the ledge and it's in there fairly fairly strong. Now if you want, you could actually drill holes in your Vero board like I did here. I did my own holes so they'll mount onto the standoffs. Okay, here's a PC board that I want to repair and it's an odd shape. You can see it's an odd shaped board and there's no mounting holes so I use all six of the standoffs and so now I can go ahead and I could desolder the components, turn it over and solder in a new component. Okay, the kit comes with six standoffs so if you have a very long board which can be flexible in the middle if you don't support it, you could use all six and then she'll be strong she won't flex anywhere on the board. Okay, the kit comes with this metal base plate and six standoffs. So this is another way that you could hold your proto board while you're working on it. And that's my tip of the day.